What's up YouTube, it's Claude with another Logic Pro X tutorial on my Logic Pro X tutorial series and in this video I'm gonna continue expanding on that Alchemy Explained mini series that I'm doing and specifically expanding more on the sound sources that we have seen in the last few videos and what I'll specifically talk about in this video is about the source sub-page controls. We have seen the global ones, now we're gonna go and see some of the stuff that does there as usual, the disclaimer, this video is part of the current round of the Amazon gift card giveaway. All you need to do is be a subscriber, leave a comment for a chance to win a $20 Amazon gift card. Make sure that you pay attention to the description and the comments to see what dates that applies on, okay? And with that being said, let's jump right into larger because I want to get done with this. I don't want to waste your time. We have, we're, we're still here, we're still in the sources. Just as a little recap, we were talking about the global parameters, right? We saw all of those. We went a little bit into the import audio in the last video, and we have seen already what all of these options here do. We haven't talked about waveforms yet, but we will later. And today we're just gonna jump into the source subpage controls, which are this all of these pages that you have here. First thing that you need to know is that, and I have mentioned it before, depending on what you have on your source, it's the options that you have available here, but they are also tied to these tabs here, which again, as in the last video, depending on what the analysis mode, the synthesis mode is for the source, is what you're gonna have active. Always pay attention to things that are in cyan or bluish color. That means that those are active. For example, on A, I have one of the samples from the last video. I brought it as additive and spectral mode. So I have spectral on and I have format on. If you remember from the last video, if you don't, just, uh, just go watch it. So those options are available to me now. If I go to B, I only have additive and it says it right there will be the same for C and for D. So keep that in mind that although I'm going to go through some of the uh, different parameters here, there's a dependency to what the mode or the source synthesis method that you have utilized is. Keep that in mind. So going right away to what we have some of the parameters already repeat with global so if you pay attention you have these four guys here they're back and you have them available you have your volume you have your coarse tuning you have your panning and you have your send button with the pop-up so i'm not gonna explain those again because those are exactly what they are here in the global. Now, the first thing that we have that's pretty, or could be confusing, but it's different in a way, it's this on button. So if I press the on button, it's gonna turn my source on and off. In turn, when you're in the global controls, you just press the letter and it's gonna achieve the same result. So pay attention to that because it could be confusing. Now we still have our drop down or pop-up menu. We have something different here, which is this fine tuning. And that's nothing more than what it says. It's just fine tuning your source in sense. Then you have here this solo button and it's gonna act exactly as you would solo a track. So if I were to hit you know, on a track this here, right? It's gonna solo it out. Same thing is going to happen if I press the solo button in the source of page control. Notice how the yellow indicates that only that is present. And before I continue, let me just tell you one thing, and it's that I did change. You may notice that I did change the preset, but I still have the same MIDI information. And I to that preset, I added this uh, sample from the previous video. So let's just give it a play before I continue. So you don't get bored. Hopefully you 
are getting the idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing here is that with each video I will change the preset and do something to the either load a sample or change a waveform or something so that you notice how just with a simple changes like I have said on and on in the previous videos just simple changes simple tweaks are gonna give you such a variety of options and differences and creativity in your sounds and this is just endless options that you have here so hope that you are understanding that and getting that with what I'm trying to do the next button out of uh, to the very right of the solo is your stereo on and off same as with the tracks if you have it on any audio source that you may have imported or waveform will sound in stereo so you have both channels available or if it's off it's going to just play one channel in the case of alchemy it's going to do the left side why is that important though here in alchemy it's because if you bring for example this sample like i did and you bring it in spectral plus additive mode then this stereo on and off button is going to also act as a panning of sorts for the individual oscillators in the additive element or individual grains when you are in the granular element so that's something else that's going to give you a fine tuning fine tweaking of sounds and in turn help you be more creative with what you're doing next up is the edit button i did talk about this briefly in previous videos when you press it you enter what i like to call the sampler portion this is equivalent or very similar to the xs24 as, f as far as the layout you know with the with your key and those are your your samples right that's your sample loaded and it's chromatically playing the pitch up and down but we're not going to talk about this in great detail i just wanted to show it to you because we're going to see this later you have your waveform of your sample in this case from source um, a if you go to B, C, and D, you would see, if you had a sample loaded, you would see more information as well. You have other options here to tweak. And then depending on the source, when you, you can go to the additive and spectral, and that's why I have some information visible there because that's how my sample was imported. But if I go to B, I don't really see much there, but let's close that for now because that's gonna be talked about later then this knob here which is the weight knob it will just set a delay between when you hit a note and when it triggers the source that's not gonna be that obvious from a sample but let's see it uh, i'm gonna play it again all you need to know this is in sync with your tempo so it's gonna be um, an increment in the different measures when, when it's playing depending on what you set it it's probably not going to be that noticeable, but let's try it. Yeah, it's not, I realize it's not that noticeable. If I were to hit a note on my keyboard though, that um, that's probably more, more would be more obvious, more clear, but that's simply what it does. Then um, I'm gonna leave these two guys for, for last, and there's a reason for that, but I'm gonna be talking about the key scale. This pop-up menu gives you three options. So you have key and pitch bend, key and off. So key and pitch bend, it's the default option and what that's going to do is the the pitch of the source is going to respond to mini note information and it's going to re, uh, respond to pitch bend data so you can you know in logic pro you can draw pitch bend data or you can draw MIDI data but you can also use your keyboard pitch bending uh, knob or wheel to make the source respond the pitch of the source is going to respond to that if you use key you are going to be going to get one of them instead of the key and pitch bend with key you only get this uh, the the portion of the key so you're gonna 
affect the pitch of the source by the MIDI data. So at whatever key is at, it's going to affect that. And off, what off is going to do is that the pitch of the source is not going to respond to either of them. It's just going to play as is, right? Then to the right of that, we have loop mode and you have five options here. You none is going to ignore the loop start and end points and that's tied to when you go to the edit mode and you can set your loop start and end points none is going to ignore them and it's just going to play the entire sound without looping if you go to continuous or if you set your mode your looping mode to continuous it's going to play from the beginning it's going to loop the region and then continue looping forward while you hold the note down during the envelope release phase the sustain what's going to do is going to do the plane in the beginning enter the loop loop again when you hold the note but then it's going to exit the loop region to play the normal sound when you're entering the release phase when you're releasing your key then it's going to play the sample normally forward and back is going to do all that you're going to play it's going to enter the loop but then instead of going forward like with continues is going to alternate back and forth and all is going to ignore the loop start and end point and it's just going to loop the entire thing forever the other options let you do kind of a adsr type of thing like when you're pressing depending if you're holding the note or releasing it it's how the looping is going to interact with from the source right the looping the source audio is going to loop depending on what you choose here which is pretty pretty neat very important to the right you have a real-time spectrogram and that's just your waveform overview display so it's just going to show you your waveform for the source that you're using so what we have here this little graphic this is one of the very first things or one of the things that's going to be dependent on which tabs here you have accessible it's unfortunate because I don't have any sauce here. Let me see if I, I'm just gonna load something real quick. There you go. So when you are in your um, granular sampler or even the BA mode, then you're gonna see a shape with source A since I am dealing with a sample that was brought in with spectral and additive and you can see the highlighting right everything that's highlighted or bluish means that it's on i am not going to see any waveform data there but when i play i will see some real-time elements or a real-time display of that spectral view of my source so in essence this window here is a graphic to watch waveform data and it's going to depend again on your type of synthesis for the source and what elements that's gonna activate and speaking of these guys here these are nothing more than your element button so when you choose a synthesis type as i have said you can see the related parameters using those buttons if you have a combination of additive pro spectral pitch and format that's going to be available like for a sample if you have some simple saw waveform then you're going to have um, different options so you um, with uh, additive and and all of that is going to obviously bring some other options that we're going to see when we talk later about source filters which is this portion down here but i'm not going to talk about that in this video in fact it's going to be the next video and the reason for that is because there's a a few little intricacies to cover here and i don't want to mix them in this video i think it's i believe it's better if it's put in another video same with the different parameters that you have at your disposal here because it's a lot to cover and it's better if we see it in a different video now to close the video, as I said, I was gonna leave these two guys for last. And this, the position knob and the speed knob, which I think used to be called the stretch knob or something like that. This is 
similar to things that we saw with the EVOC 20 synth and I believe with the ES2 if I'm not mistaken but to get right to what they do the position knob is going to determine the play by star position of your audio data very simple so when you like if I press any of the buttons you're going to see your modulation down here changes to highlight what it is well you can highlight stuff right by pressing on them if I press the waveform I'm not going to see anything here because I just have the saw in and I have this added to tab that's not what it, I should go to the BA to see that and if I go to my sample let's go to C you can see that I, I don't it depends on what I have with my source well, when I highlight it I can see that um, I can see that waveform for that sample if I change that knob around see how that pos star position changes and in fact in fact if I go way past that and I play that now I can't hear that To the right of that, I have that speed, and it's pretty simple. That's just going to set the data playback rate in any of the modes that I have here, specifically additive, spectral, or granular mode. For example, if I yeah, I don't think it's going to be noticeable with that sample. Let's see if we try. Uh... That's that entered uh, or gave us a subtle difference there. Yeah, you really have to be in any of these modes and have something else. Uh, let's see. Spring. Make something okay. Yeah, that should that should work. So yeah, that's what the uh, that's the position and speed knobs intend to do. And with that, really, I'm just gonna cut the video right here. In the next video, we're gonna talk about source filters and source filters only. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna go and talk about the source elements overview and tie up a little bit better the start tying up a little bit better talking about sources but trust me that's not all as you have seen a lot of things to cover with the sources only so again to just keep it simple to understand and then you can reference later quicker i'm just going to keep the videos like this and go little by little okay so Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, share with whoever you think they might be interested in. You know where to contact me. If you don't, just pay attention to that graphic that's down here. And you can send me questions or requests for different tutorials or whatnot. Remember that I also have my uh, series in Spanish that I'm catching up and translating everything in English, but it, I can make different depending on your request as well. Thank you very much. Peace out, YouTube.